Hello, everyone. I'm Josh Oaks with SmartSocial.com. You're listening to us perhaps on our podcast on iTunes or watching us on Facebook, perhaps on YouTube or anywhere else, Stitcher Radio. And today I have an amazing mom here from Iowa, and we're going to talk about a few things. Now, she didn't know today she was going to be on our podcast, but she said so many amazing things. and She's so humble. Right now, I'm going to tell you before we get started on today's podcast, I think you're going to learn a tremendous amount because I've had a quick conversation with her. And she said some incredible things. So if you're wondering, should I listen to this episode? Should I not? You're going to love it. And and this is Tracy Campbell today from Iowa. And she's a mom of two young men at 12 and 16 years old. She comes to us live today in her home. And let me tell, bring everybody up to speed here real quick. Now, Tracy is, is a real mom and she was very humble. She replied to one of our newsletters that go out to a lot of people with giving them safety tips. And she replied and said, here's some of my frustrations and concerns with raising my sons. And she said one thing that was absolutely powerful. She said, in my home, we are raising husbands. And that I went, what? And we started emailing back and forth. And that's when I said, Tracy, I've got to get you on here. I have to, we have to talk with you about that phrase. Tracy, welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the video. Thanks, Josh. I'm so excited you're here. Now, you and I got on the phone and you said, oh, well, gosh, um, I don't know. I mean, it has nothing to do with digital raising husbands. And I said, yes, it does. Has everything to do because digital, there's no online and offline behaviors. It's all the same. And that's what we show kids on how to Google themselves. Did what, how they behave end up online? And is it congruent with who they are in real life? So I want you to talk to me just real quick, if you don't mind about what you mean when you say raising husbands in your family. Well, I, I say this a lot and I've said it for a few years now that, you know, you get your kids start getting at a certain age and you realize that maybe they're not doing the things around the house that you want them to do, or maybe they're, you just want them to behave at a better behave at a better standard than what maybe they're expected elsewhere. And in our house, we do expect a higher standard, not because we're better than everybody, but because we feel like we'd be better off. Um, So it kind of started with the boys, you know, we're entitled to a lot of things and they like to have a lot of things and they didn't really want to work. So I thought, you know, my husband works and he might not work around the house necessarily, but it's going to have to change because this is where they learn their work ethic. We don't live on a farm. We live in the town. And they're just going to have to learn how to do this. So I told them they needed chores. Well, dad doesn't have chores and that's where it hit me. He's going to have chores. He's going to be responsible for the garbage and he can make as big a deal out of doing the garbage as he wants to do. He just has to have a chore because when my kids get older and they, if they choose to be married, their wives may not want to stay home. They may not want to take care of the house. They may have a better job than they have, but they may have to help take care of the house. And I feel like them having that respect for their future wives, learning that respect would be great for them to have to be a better husband, a better father in their lives. And that'll be the most important job that they'll have in their lifetime is being a husband and a father. Wow. Okay. So everybody that's listening to this right now, there's a mic drop right there. Teaching her sons how to work, teaching them how to do chores because the future, we don't know what it holds. Things are blended. Sometimes it's incredible. And I think it is awesome. And I think it's very open-minded for you to say, who knows who they'll marry. They may go Mm -hmm. off and want to stay home with the kids, have a blended career. You never know. Right. Their, Their wife might have an amazing business and they might support and help and do rad stuff. And in teaching your kid how to work, uh, you'll never regret that. So talk to us about, what have you told your sons on how to treat young women and what to do when helping those women get home? Well, so our oldest son, he had a girlfriend that lives down the street, which we absolutely adored. Um, And she would come over and hang out with us at night and he'd send her home. She'd just walk. She lived maybe five houses away and he would just send her home. And one day I said, no, this is not how this works. And, you know, I just guess I didn't really realize that he didn't know this until I saw her leave one night and he's like, well, it's dark out. And I'm like, exactly. That's why you walk her home. And so we kind of set that standard with them that, you know, you, you walk her home at night, you make sure that she gets where she needs to be before you get home and just make sure she's taken care of. 
Wow, that's really terrific. You hit on something that's really big that we hear a lot, Tracy, from people, and that's common sense. But common sense doesn't exist until unless you, as the parent, right, tells your student that in a repeated manner, both through positive behaviors, which we'll talk about in a minute, mm -hmm. modeling that positive behavior and repeating that positive behavior. And right. that then becomes a sense that is common to them. But yeah. in the day and age that we have, Good. Uh, walking a young woman home. I love that. Looking out for others. Now you talk a little bit about letting your, your sons fail. Tell me about that and a story that relates to that. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we could watch them and we could micromanage everything that they do, but that just becomes something that we do and nothing that they're learning. Um, so, you know, again, I, I have a lot of examples for probably both of my kids. The easiest one is our oldest son who has a job. Um, you know, we live in a small town. We know the guy he works for, um, and we don't just know of him. We know him, and we could easily call and ask him, "Hey, Caden needs this day off. Can you give him this day off?" Or you know, something came up. Can he get this time off? And um, you know, we just kind of step back and say, "These these are the days that you need. And if you don't get them off, then you can't participate in whatever it is." Um, there was an opportunity to do a weekend of a youth group trip, and my husband and I want to encourage that. We think that's very important. I had just learned about it. I think my son knew about it ahead of time, but didn't mention it to me, and so he didn't ask for the time off, and it was too late, and now he couldn't find somebody to do it. So the natural consequence of, oh, I got to be on top of my schedule now that I have a job and I'm growing up, um, I just we think that it's important that he does that sort of thing and not us. That's really powerful. Um, I love that. You're not emasculating him by saying, oh, we already got you off of work and stuff. Right. It feels like he has a mission. He has to go talk to people on his own. Okay. So you've mentioned on past conversations that we are experts at comparing. I want you to talk about including versus excluding, bring everybody up to speed, pretend like they've never heard it before. What do you mean on including versus excluding and being a comparative expert these days? So I think the digital world, and I've fallen into this before, and I'm trying really hard to get out of it, um, not by staying off of Facebook, but not reading into things mostly. Um, just I think that parents are becoming comparative export experts in, oh, my kid doesn't do that, or my kid does do that, but they're not doing this, or, oh, we're not doing this as a family, or we're, you know, just comparing. And every family is different. Um, and I think it's important to remember that our kids in this digital world, they can see everything that's going on. And they can see on Snap Map where all of, their kid, all of their friends are gathering. And it's important for them to understand that they might not be included in this gathering, but that doesn't mean that they're excluded. That doesn't mean that their friends are necessarily there saying, oh, I didn't want him here. It's just not that way. And so I try to tell them all the, you know, often that if you're not included, that's okay, but you're not being excluded because you're not included. And I think it's just important for them, for their self, um, their confidence to know that they don't have to be included in everything that their friends do. I love that. And that's so true. We've got, and I was looking for the slide here, but you and I talked just briefly, and everybody that's listening to this, if you haven't heard me talk about this, we all believe social media is good. Some people do. And a lot of people are like, I'm afraid of it. It's really bad. Let's keep our kids from it. But I really think we need to define it. It's like food. It, there's good and bad. There's everything within reason, and you can't keep your kids away from it, right? So we're going to dive into that here in a sec, some screen time, because you've got a great tip around the dinner table. But everyone listening, everyone watching right now, please do consider, here's a couple good things that social media provides, and then it tips into the bad stuff. And that's when it becomes too much, in my opinion. Social is good when it's you're, you're, you are connecting and communicating with people. If you meet someone somewhere, I just saw a realtor at Starbucks in between my morning routine. One of my friends became a realtor. I looked over his shoulder in a creepy way, and I was like, Cody, you're a realtor now? What's going on? This is awesome. We connected on Instagram because he works at Starbucks and we became friends. So we connected and we're communicating about stuff because I love to remodel houses. Boom. That's amazing. Now, as soon as it tips over into something different, it gets bad. 
connecting, communicating, as soon as it gets into comparing or consuming ourselves, if I was scrolling for an hour on Instagram trying to get my happiness from that, I have now consumed, it's consumed my time and it will not give me that happiness that a real human will or a book will or something else that I'm building something, creating something, whatever my passion is. And the last one is when you scroll too much, everyone, this is our opinion, but we found this, the, be the biggest psychologists agree. And as a leading learner, we find that you, it leads to a uh, comparison. And when you're comparing, it leads to depression, anxiety, and unhappiness and getting quiet. So connecting, communicating is amazing. It's like email. You're connecting, you're communicating, you're coordinating. As soon as it gets into consuming and comparing, that's just too much. And we often will talk about what we're going to, the next step. The next step is let's talk about what you do around dinner. What do you tell your kids? What type of device do you have to keep it distraction free? Well, I implemented this a while ago. Um, we have a phone basket and if the phone basket is, is out, then you put your phone in the basket. It could show up at dinner time. It doesn't show up at all dinner times, but we don't, we don't eat dinner together all the time just because of our schedules. But if it shows up, your phone goes in the basket. It may show up after school and it may be there when they get home from school and they, oh my gosh, we have to put our phone away. But I do try to implement that when we are all together during um, during dinner time, and I've even asked my mother-in-law to put it in there before too. So it just—it's all around. It's adults' phones and kids' phones. That's awesome. And your mother-in-law is probably like, ah. Oh. <laughs> you mentioned that your mom and your mother-in-law might not love it, but they're modeling positive behavior. Right. I I, I love that. Um, you also talk about um, one day you asked your son to you took the phone away from him. Tell people what about that story and what your son said to you? So it was just, it was recently, um, he wasn't in trouble, but there was a consequence to something. And, um, when he got home, I said, I took the PS4 out of your room and I put the phone basket out. And every day after school, you'll put your phone in the basket. You won't be checking it, which we've done before. Like, Oh, you can check it in our presence. That's fine. But I said, you won't be checking it this time. And if you, it's going to be for my convenience right now, not for your convenience. So if you're leaving the house and I need you to have it, then it's yours. But it's going to be for my convenience for a week. And the week was actually really wonderful. Um, he didn't argue about not having his PS4. He didn't argue about not having his phone. And I, he would never tell me, because I don't think my boys don't communicate that way, but he would never tell me that it was it was good, but I asked him, do you feel a little bit of freedom from this? And he, he really admitted, yeah, it was really nice that he wasn't tied on to it all the time. Um, he's young. I, I think we gave him probably his freedom with the phone a little too soon, so we're trying to monitor it better. But he, um, he admitted that it was really nice not to be tied to his phone. Wow, that's powerful. And you have such normal, you, you actually have great kids, the fact that they'd mentioned that, because... That's really neat. Everybody listening right now, your kids are looking for guidance. They are not, they do not have the vocabulary you do as an adult in your decades of experience of being on this earth. You've made failures before. If you're listening to this and you are hesitant about, oh, that's my kid's phone and I can't take it back. Yes, you can. I want you to think, and I'm, I'm going to sound really forceful, but this will save a life. This will save a kid from depression. I know it. One, if your child at all is being quiet, more quiet, remember who pays for that phone, remember who bought that phone, the monthly fee and the actual $800 price tag, the fortune that we pay for these things that iPhone gets 99% of the money for. Remember who bought that and remember your most important perspective is really just to make sure the mental health of your child. And these are, whether you're wondering it or not, this is methamphetamine right here. Doc, go Google it. And doctors will say, yeah, cocaine, meth, the, and an iPhone, all in the same exact thing. Android, iPhone, you name it. And the social media accounts and the engineers that I know and my friends in tech, they are designing this not to help your kids. They are designing it so your kids are scrolling and comparing, and it is scary. So if you see, see me being a little bit enthusiastic about you taking the power back, please know that it is for your child's protection. I don't get paid by the apps. We only get paid by schools and parents. And because of that, we can be opinionated. All right, talk to me really quickly. Um, you claim, 
I want you to share your vulnerability for a quick sec, Tracy, because you said in past conversations, I feel like I fail all the time. And then this, I want you to tell a story of where you felt you failed so everyone else can just say, oh, I feel, I feel so normal. I'm not sure I could pick one story. Um, but honestly, I fail all the time because I'm not good at this. I'm not good at this digital world. Um, I kind of go play on your PS4 because I got things I need to get done. Sometimes that happens. I try not to let it happen for, you know, hours upon hours, but there are hours that they might be on it. Um, here in Iowa this winter has been just horrible. They've had, I think, 10 snow days already in the month of January and so far in February. And, um, you know, I, I find like I probably yell at them more than they really deserve to be yelled at. <laughs> so to be fair, um, they're, they're pretty darn good kids, but I'm just a mom who fails quite a bit. And, um, you know, like I said, I probably give in to them too much when it comes to the phones and I do fail on these phones, but there's just little changes that I can make that might make a difference or might make them stop and say, okay, mom, they would never admit it, but okay, mom was right. Or I can see her point in this now. So I love that. You're such a great mom and you're, you're very humble. I mean, I begged you to be on this podcast because so many other parents are like you. We're like, oh, it's, an, it's overwhelming, but you have kept it back to your core values. You're raising adults that people want to hang out with when they are 25 to 35 years old they will be awesome people that will contribute in a positive way because you've given them chores you've made sure that they know how to work they walk a young woman home they know how to do things around the house so that they can contribute in the family unit right. which, i mean I, I am your biggest fan right now and <laughs> and i thank you apologize for my enthusiasm I want to have a talk with everybody else right now. If you're, if you're on the fence, if you don't know how to motivate your kids right now, if you're listening to Tracy going, wow, she's awesome. I need some guidance. A couple things. One, it takes a village. You've got to have other people around you. It is not just Tracy and it's not just her husband. They have other people in their community that are looking out for their kids. Their 19 year old that has a job, they know the employer as friends, even though she doesn't call and say, I want the day off. That employer is looking out for the 19 year old. Everybody is surrounding Tracy's family to do that. We want to also be that for you. If you ever need help, we at smartsocial.com have something called the Smart Social Membership. It used to be called Parent University. It's a series of positive videos that teach your kids how to start developing their messaging online, their purpose, their passion, their projects. We build a website with them at Google Sites so they have a resume. And we start that in middle school because when they get on Instagram later, their website, their Instagram is an extension of their message. What message do you want your kids to put out there? It's basically driving school for social media because it's all the same. When you're raising husbands, you end up having husbands online. They treat people with respect because they realize that part of their message they designed, whether it's in smart social membership or your family sits down around the dinner table, we designed that with them. I want to encourage you to go to smartsocial.com, click on the membership button and join. It helps support our staff who saves people all over the world. I have a real staff. We're not funded by a big company, but it's $15 a month at the time of this recording. And it gives you all kinds of resources on how to monitor. In March, I'm teaching the whole world how to monitor their kids online. Then we're teaching them how to develop that message so that what they found online can be improved. And then we're going to help them shine online so that every family gets a website for their kid so they're constantly tweaking it. And if you think your kid is too young to do that, I have a five-year-old nephew named Bryson. We built a website for him. So instead of iPad time, he goes on and we craft his website. He's learning how to spell and he speaks a little Spanish and English. He's multilingual. And we de design his purpose, his passion, his projects. He doesn't know them, but we're making them up and he has so much fun. That's my little brother. Put this image here. And we work together as a family. So I want to I encourage everybody, find that village, no matter who that is. If you need that village to be us, go to smartsocial.com to learn more. We want to help you because I, got, I was on the phone with a mom and a dad yesterday where their 13-year-old daughter is in some ser needs some serious help, and they're developing that village. And we want to make sure we're a resource to you as well. Uh, there, there are people in your community that can do this. Tracy, I'm going to give you last word. You talk a little bit about it's okay if our kids feel this way and do this. What do you tell people when you say that? Um, I think it's okay if our kids feel failure. I think it's okay if they feel um, not included and it's just gonna grow their character in learning how to, 
how to deal with those things and how to in their life how to react to that because their reaction is their own somebody can say something but it's not because they said that it's their reaction that really gets to them so i just would encourage any mom to just you know work with your kids on it and help them and let them fail and don't do everything for them but help them along in their way i love that tracy thank you for your time today you're you're awesome thank you so much for the rest of you that are listening or watching, please rate, subscribe, and review. We want to share this message with as many people as possible. If you're on iTunes, please go to our homepage and scroll to the bottom and click on those stars. If you're on YouTube, subscribe, give us a little thumbs up. Or if you're on Facebook, click the share button or tag a friend that could use this message. We are really stepping up and creating 200 videos this year on YouTube alone and we're sharing with the whole world how to shine online, how to build that village, how to have a dialogue with your kids. It really does take a lot of people to contribute to your child's well-being. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Tracy. And remember, your kids are watching, so remember to keep it light, bright, and polite with what you do online and the behavior that you model in your home. We'll see you guys very soon. Have a great day.